What's up, guys? Pat here. This is episode 48 of SPI TV, and this is Caleb Wojcik, who uh, from DIY Video Guide, who does a lot of these videos for me. So now you're on camera instead of behind the camera, although we do have Tim behind the camera. Thanks, Tim. Hi, Tim. Uh, who's manning the other angle there. But we wanted to talk a little bit today about uh, live video, because live video is becoming a lot more popular now. Now, I say that knowing that live video has been around for quite a while actually yeah even before internet television news sports all that stuff but now individuals can do it way easier right now it's accessible and i think that kind of started when uh, what was it south by southwest a uh, couple of years ago when periscope came out actually it was meerkat that came out yeah i think right and then periscope and everybody was doing live video but now we're starting to see a shift on like where live video is going there's sort of major platforms out there that have also uh, adopted live video and it made it a major part of their strategy. So we wanted to talk about that. We also wanted to show you sort of the easy way. That was easy. The easy way, sorry, I had to throw that in there. Uh, the easy way to do live video on the recommended platforms, I guess that is what we would say. Um, but then we're also gonna take you into my office and show you some of the more, I don't know, professional style broadcasting that you could do using specific kinds of software so you can get multiple angles and different quality and, and that sort of thing. So yeah. we'll take you into the office later, but for now, uh, Caleb, I think we should talk about no matter what platform we're on for live video, um, maybe we should just go over some tips that people can use going into a live video stream. So, you know, we can just go back and forth. What, yeah. do, you, what do you think is one of the most important things people should consider when uh, getting into live video? Well, I think that a lot of people just assume they can hit record and people are going to pay attention or something like that. But I think having a game plan of what you're going to show, what you're going to talk about, you can put headlines on platforms like Periscope and YouTube and Facebook and knowing what you're going to discuss and talk about because it's no, there's no editing. So you have to be engaging like right. the entire time. If something goes wrong or like your kid needs you or whatever, you can't really just stop in the middle. So, right. But that's why I love yeah. live streaming because it's real life and things like that do happen. Yeah. It makes it more human. That's really why I love live streaming, why I'm going to put a little bit more effort into it this year um, because it's, it's, it is more real. It's more raw and I think it's okay. And uh, for, for most people doing it the easy way, that was easy. It's, there's like a delay on this thing. It's, you got to time it better. It's really bad. Um, well, I'll stop doing that. Um, but for most people using their phone will do the job. You know, Periscope, Facebook Live. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. YouTube is now getting into yeah. into uh, live streaming, which is pretty cool. Um, I do agree with you. You should know a little bit about what you're going to say, but you don't have to script out the whole thing. Um, it is raw, like I said. But I, but um, do you or should you or do you recommend having people know when you're going to go live? Because there's kind of two ways to go about it. You tell your audience when you're gonna go live, you let them know ahead of time so that when that time comes around, they know that you're going live, or you just kind of go on and, and hope people will, will come on, which a lot of people like too. So what, what are your thoughts on that? I think if you're going to do it a lot, like on an ongoing basis, it's a good idea to have maybe a set day of the week or a time of the day so people come to expect it because if they just get a notification at some random time, some random day, they're going to be less likely to, to click on it. Mm -hmm. So if you know you have a very specific one you're going to do, maybe tell people about it, tease it, drum up some interest, maybe even build a separate email list or something like that to tell people just like you would a webinar. But mm -hmm. if you're going to do it consistently on a platform, maybe just pick a time of day that you always do it so people come to expect it. Okay. I think you could do both. You know, you have maybe one episode of your whatever live show or whatever you want to call it yeah. um, that comes out consistently every week or how often you want to do it. But then in between, you can sort of do these random sort of even more uh, casual behind the scenes type of things. That, that's how I would approach it. Um, in addition to that, I'm curious, you had mentioned webinar. What is the difference? I mean, are we actually talking about webinars here? Or what, real, what are the differences between webinar and live streaming really? Well, I think webinar to me always comes from seminars which is you go to some presentation and it's teaching, it's like. teaching it's there's slides and that sort of thing i think that live streaming you can do a lot of different stuff pretty much anything you can do in video format you could do live and then there are some things that you can't really do in a typical video format like live question and answer interaction that sort of thing mm -hmm. that's my favorite part of doing a live stream is 
getting questions from people, responding to them directly on it. That's that's my favorite part. So yeah. I think you have to play towards the strengths of being live, being spontaneous, interacting, I think is the most important thing you can do. And also a lot of these will be recorded and people watch them later. So at the beginning, you know, maybe you're not addressing anyone live, but someone watching the recording is going to see that part. So then you talk to them and you call them the replay viewers or something to that effect. Mm-hmm. So knowing all the intricacies of some people are live and going to be interacting, some people are going to be watching it later. And it can be a little bit more DIY and like you said, behind the scenes to make it raw and less polished, right. I think. Like one of the things that I enjoy while watching a live video is like not really knowing what's going to happen next. And I think, you know, the interactions, getting real feedback from people who are asking real questions right then and there, it's, it's more interesting than sort of something that's scripted, like you said. So I, so I like that. Um, why don't we offer the viewers who are watching this now, uh, and this isn't live right now, so... Uh, maybe it should have been. Maybe it should have been. Yeah, I mean, we could have. I mean, that's, that's another thing. Actually, that's a good point. You can stream stuff that you're doing for other things. So, for example, right now, if we planned a little bit more ahead of time, we could be live streaming this right now on Facebook and or Periscope at the same time to sort of serve as double purpose and, uh, and, and whilst recording a YouTube video that could be used for, for other things. So, you know, if you're recording a podcast, even though it's audio, people love to see those behind the scenes things. So speaking on that, for me, one of the favorite things I love to share online video are some of the things I'm doing, like recording episodes of Ask Pat, or you know, if I'm out somewhere with my family, just sharing a little bit of, of where I'm at and a little bit of my daily life. What are some other things ki- that people can do on a live stream to help them prepare for like, well, what, what can they talk about? I think behind the scenes is probably the coolest that people want to check out and be interested in. So sometimes I'll do a live stream of the gear I'm packing before I go on a video shoot or mm-hmm. if I'm doing a launch and showing the inside of a course or something like that. But I like what you said earlier today when we were talking about it where you don't really have a set strategy for it yet because it's still really new and you're just experimenting with different things, figuring out what you like, what other people like. And I think it's just really good practice to get comfortable in front of a camera Mm -hmm. versus setting up a tripod and lights and all that stuff. People are used to now filming themselves at arm's length, putting it on Snapchat or Twitter or Facebook. And so I think the biggest thing is it's really good practice and then just show things behind the scenes and be raw and interact with maybe the two or three people that are going to watch your first live stream and work your way up from there. So yeah. Definitely. I also love doing Q and A's, specifically going live to answer questions, so that people, when they come in, they know that they're going to be interacting with me. Um, I also love showing the unboxing of things. I think that's another really popular one that a lot of people do, especially people who sell products online or who do affiliate marketing. That's a great opportunity for you to show the insides of things that you're going to be offering to your audience. Um, when people see what they're going to get, they're more likely to get it. You know, right? Uh, what else can people do? I mean, uh, I know some people who, you know, they might say, here are five tips for blank related to your niche, and that's the overall topic. But then, of course, the conversation being live kind of goes and veers off here and there, which you should just let it do that. But having sort of a specific thing that you want to cover will get you back on track. Um, Another thing, what else can people do on there? I think the biggest thing is to treat it like you're talking to someone and so when I join a live stream and there's no person talking or they're just showing something and they're not narrating I think that people are, are struggling with that on snapchat too where they'll just show something and it's just what am I looking at what is this you have to kind of craft the narrative of whatever you're doing so you have to say okay in this live stream I'm going to talk about xyz and do a summary at the end and talk throughout and just try to make it as interactive and there's going to be people coming and going. So doing little recaps midway through, if you're like doing five things, like recap yep. them along the way. Yep. And that's a great tip. Those types of things. Cause people are coming and going just like live television and they might not go back to the beginning. Right. What are some other small tips like that before we get into the sort of how to, uh, for live video and live streaming. So for me, you know, always, you know, look directly at the camera lens. That's another one talking to the people on the other end, that, that's good. I love saying people's names. Yeah, saying people's names, Names for sure. are what most people love to hear the most. People love to hear their own name. That was, 
that was in uh, Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And so when people are interact uh, yeah. interacting, call them by name and say, uh, hello, George from Indiana. Like, good to see you here. Thanks for coming on. And even though you can't do that to everybody, the fact that you're just doing it even to one person, everybody sees that you are there and you care and you're actually paying attention. Yeah. Uh, what about audio? Let's talk about audio really quick related to video. So pick a quiet environment if you can. I mean, if you're doing it outside, that's fine. But we're in a quiet outside right. space. There might be a lawnmower or something. Like yeah, that. but and birds. Pick something, something quiet. Maybe turn off the music, turn off your car if you're filming one in your car or something like that, and bring down the other sound level. And you can get better microphones as well if you are further away from your phone or whatever computer you're using. Um, just think about the audio being a little better. But the stuff that's built into your phones, if you're using that, it's usually fine as long as you're not touching the bottom and stuff where the microphone is. Right, right. Uh, so the microphone that I would recommend, I don't know if you recommend the same one, if you're gonna be using sort of an external one, pinning it on you or you know giving it to somebody who you're speaking to, um, as opposed to using the built-in one, would be the Rode Smart Lab. Is that the one that you would recommend? Yeah, definitely the Smart Lab Plus. It's a little bit better. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and version. then you can also use tripods, things like that. I love to use the Olo Clip, O L L O Clip, and that's a little device that goes, or a little just plastic thing with a couple lenses that you can just hook on. Goes right on top of the lenses on your camera. We'll put all the links and stuff in the description here on YouTube or on the blog so that you can get access to those and, and try those out. But um, then there are some of the more fancier things, like you could get. Um, I have this. Uh, gosh, I don't. I don't have it here, Tim. I don't know if you want to go and reach over so I can just share that really quick, but. You can get fancy. I mean, you could start easy. I'm not gonna hit the easy button, but I would re That was easy. I would recommend starting off easy. Don't buy anything additional that you don't really need up front because it's gonna take a while to get comfortable doing this. But once you kind of get addicted to it, which a lot of people do, you can get into the fancier equipment like the Olo Clip, like those microphones. I have this thing here called the G4 Pro, which is essentially a uh, what is this called a gimbal mm -hmm. um, and then you know it's weighted right now for my phone so that's why it's kind of just kind of droopy right there but when I put my phone in and I turn it on it makes it very very sort of just like you're flying um, so I've used this a few times walking around Utah when I was at an event doing some live streams and it just people see and notice start to notice those little you know professional moments of your uh, of your live stream and then with, with the ability to post on Facebook and stuff, and now that they're being seen by hundreds, if not thousands of people sometimes, if you wanna level up, you can with some of the equipment. But of course, it always comes down to the content. Is it good, is it entertaining? Are you actually interacting with your audience? That's, that's important too. So before we go into the office and talk about some of the more heavy duty equipment and software that you can use to stream, multiple camera angles and stuff, let's just give quick tips starting out. If you're just starting out with live video, what do we do and what platform would you recommend? If you're just getting started with them in general, I think Periscope or even Snapchat is kind of a live streaming component to it because you're doing really short videos of things that are happening live. I would start on somewhere like Snapchat or Periscope and even Facebook to your personal page, maybe not to your business page if you have a huge following there and you don't want to put something unprofessional up there. Just do it, practice. The best thing about these platforms when you're getting started is that the they go away. 24 hours, it's gone. So any of your new followers in the future, they're not going to see those things unless you do something to download them and right. re-upload them somewhere but Facebook, else. But Facebook, it stays up. Yeah, Facebook, they stay up. And Facebook, I feel, would be easy for people too because you already have Facebook. You go into your app, you click like you're going to add a status update, and there's a little button there for live streaming. I think it's accessible to everybody now, right? Yeah, everybody, I think so. Everybody has that capability. And you just hit go, and you go, of course, like taking taking Caleb's advice earlier, planning a little bit ahead of time what you want to say, having a really catchy or, or um, curious curiosity-driven headline to really get people to click through because they're going to see that in their feed. And um, yes, they'll see it, but if, if it's about something that they're interested in, they're going to continue to watch too. And then lastly, uh, no matter how you do live stream, make sure you have a call to action or some sort of reason that people should continue to watch you, have them uh, click to get the notification. I think on Facebook and on Periscope, they can click on your username or something to get notified every time you come out with another live stream. So, um, I mean, that's pretty cool. I mean, even even think about it, even if you had 50 people th that were getting notifications, that's 50 people who every time you come out with a new, a new live stream, they would be like, hey, Caleb's coming out with a new live stream, come watch it now. Yeah. I mean, that's super powerful. And, and the numbers on a live stream are 
actual people, whereas visitors to your website or podcast downloads, you don't know if they actually read it. You don't know if they actually listened to the episode. If there's a number on the live stream, at some point that was a person watching it. Right. And you might not get stats on how long they watched it or maybe some of the more intricate things, but one-on-one connections, interacting with people in the comments, you can build relationships that way that you wouldn't be able to otherwise. Yeah. So for starting out, just use your phone and uh, that, that's what we recommend. Now, if you want to get into the heavy duty stuff, let's go over to the office and we'll show you something called Wirecast, some of the camera equipment we're using, and uh, we'll just throw those up there for those of you who want to get a little bit more advanced with that. So we'll see you in there. So here we are in the office, and uh, you came over today actually not just to film videos with me today, but to actually help me get set up with a more professional live video set up here in the, in the office with multiple ca camera angles and things like that. Yeah. I think if you want to go down that route, um, you just have to make sure that this is something that you do want to commit to because it is it can get pretty expensive pretty right. fast. Yeah, you can simply use a webcam built in or show your desktop of your computer pretty simply. Or if you're just using your phone, maybe getting a better mic and a little little tripod for less than $100, you'll, you'll right. be set. But if you want to go a little bit above and beyond, maybe try to make something that looks like a television show or some other live streaming mm -hmm. thing that's out there on the web, then yeah, you have to get some nicer equipment. Nicer yeah. equipment. Of course, the cameras are pretty important. You would want something with sort of HD capability, 1080p. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a really good actually webcam uh, from Logitech, which we'll put in the, in the show notes uh, here. It's back there. Uh, which is actually on right now, filming us filming us from behind actually, uh, which I don't know why, but um, <laughs> it's Logitech 1080p 920C, mm -hmm. uh, I believe. And it's it's really good. It does it does a job. I that's what I use for Skype calls and yeah. other live streaming stuff um, that are from my desktop. So I have that one set up on my computer to capture sort of the, just the, the the front face view. Um, but I also want to do some side angles and things like that. And if you have other cameras already available, like a GoPro, uh, a Hero Cam, you can use that too. We're going to be using a Hero Cam two because I just had one, and there's a little connection for a what is this the mini, mini HDMI, HDMI mini yeah. HDMI cable, which then comes out into a regular HDMI cable. Yeah. And that attaches to this thing right here. So this is a Black Magic Studio sorry. No, let's go. <laughs> Black Magic Ultra Studio Mini Recorder. And what this does is it takes either an HDMI from like a GoPro, a DSLR, or something like that, or SDI cable from a more high end live stream camera. And then it goes into Thunderbolt for a Mac. And so you can take your cameras, plug them in through this, use a Thunderbolt port, and it essentially becomes a, a high-end webcam. Yeah. Because you get an image that looks really good, you get to do different lenses, you can blur the background, that sort of thing, and it just makes your production look even better that right. way. Now, of course, we do need software for this, and I have two options to, beyond just using your phone, to get things like your screen captures from your desktop on there. Um, there's one that I don't know if you know the name of it, but it's it's like called open source or something. A lot of people have been talking about it because it is a free option to do live streaming, but it's a lot more complicated to use than the one that we're using. And of course, we'll put the links to both of these um, in the show notes. But the one that we're using is called Wirecast. Mm -hmm. And I love the company who uh, created this piece of software because they also created ScreenFlow, which is one of my favorite pieces of software for screen recording. So it's Telestream is the company. And uh, again, the name of the product is called Wirecast. Now it does cost at the current price is $499, mm -hmm. but it allows you to plug in all these different angles, all different audio sources. You can even include images that you can overlay. Like if you want to see a box up here while, while streaming live, like imagine you're going to be talking about a specific product and you're talking about it and you press a button and then that image pops up just like a newscaster. You know, when you see the news, sometimes images show up of the person they're talking about or the event that had just happened. Um, you can do that. You can put a lower third in there too. So there's a lot of really cool professional things you can do. Um, I will say that I've tested it out already and it's not easy. And that's why I had you come in today. But I thought this would be a great time to talk about some of these things. So um, I guess I just want to ask, like, if we're just starting out and you want to have your screen capture, your main facing video, and one additional camera, what what would we all need? So you would need, I would just stick with webcams. If you want to keep it simple, webcams, they plug in via USB. So not this. No, because that okay. starts to get more complex because you have to make sure your camera can output the right signal and the right frame rates and all that kind of stuff. Okay. And so if you're just getting started, go with webcams. And if you want to get fancy, maybe maybe do a GoPro to one of these 
as like a wider angle. But this C920 here on the long cable. I don't think you can see that. Yeah. Yeah, this is the C920. That's what I would go with. And you could buy multiple of these, however many USB cables you have. And when you go yeah. to Wirecast, you can select them each as a different camera. Yeah. Um, and you can set them up in the right spot. And then you essentially create hotkeys for each of those different cameras. And you click your button on your keyboard, and it then switches and fades across. We'll show you a little bit of background or B-roll yeah. of that happening right now as we're yeah. talking, just so you can see what that looks like and how it fades in and out. Again, it's very professional. And you know, it's a small touch, but it does add that level of, wow, this person... Um, has something that's worth listening to and watching. Because most people are going to be live streaming from their phones. And so whatever you're doing that's a production level above that of not holding your phone out in your hand is going to look better. And if you start to have multiple angles and you're switching and moving around the room and it, it's all pretty seamless, which it won't be on the first try, but maybe by the third or fourth or fifth one, it'll start to work well. And we've talked with some people that do live streaming all the time and they just say you try new things each mm -hmm. one you do and you keep getting better get maybe better equipment to make it go smoothly yeah we know a lot of people who are in different niches who are the only ones doing it on a more professional level beyond just the arm's length video camera and they are getting a lot of people watching their streams sharing them that's the cool thing about facebook live um people love to share stuff it's awesome because they want to be the ones that lets their friends know about it so uh, it's a quick, not quick, but it's it's a it's one of those things that if you if you try it out and you get it right, it could be a way for you to quickly grow uh, more more quickly than you might be right now. Because there aren't that many people doing it right, right now, and, and it's, it's not challenging. Right, and... the challenge is is the big thing. If you can overcome those challenges, I mean, a lot of people want to do this, but they won't because they just don't want to spend the time to learn. So, um, hopefully, uh, you can try this out, experiment. Everybody has a different setup. Everybody just has certain ways of doing their own thing. So, um, you know, hopefully you're going to see some cool live stream stuff for me in the future. I might even share once I get more experience with this a lot more of the equipment that uh, that I use because again, we just came together. We brought all this stuff uh, together today to test things out, and it tested pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, but we haven't gone live yet because uh, we're also seeing what our other options are. And so, buying specific cables that we don't have yeah, and that sort of thing. That, that's the thing. If you're going to be doing multiple camera angles, you want to make sure you have long enough USB cables or Thunderbolt cables. I mean, th there's a lot here. So I would say if you're just starting out with live video, which probably most of you are, stick with your mobile phone first. Give that a shot. Get a feel for it. If you want to expand, try um, using this other piece of software and uh, just go from there. So any final tips before we finish up today? I think just keep it simple and focus on making really good live streams. And then after you do them for a while and you maybe you pick up some steam and more people watch, then invest in some equipment to make it look better too. Yeah. Because you don't you definitely don't need all this equipment up front. No. Not at all. Cool. Thanks, Caleb. You're welcome. That was easy. <laughs>